this video, I'm going to try and answer the question of what is the best Beyblade X launcher? Everybody knows the power of customizing and creating your own Beyblade combos. Whether you want to make one that's the most fun to use or the most meta and overpowered. But sometimes people overlook what launcher they're using. So they just use whatever they have or whatever they see someone else using. So in this video, I'm going to try and showcase the differences between all the currently available Beyblade X launchers, which one might be better for certain situations, and which one I like the best. So hit that like button, hit subscribe to join the Nook Nation, and now let's move on to the launcher guide. Before we talk launchers, I do want to discuss the differences in the Beyblade brands. First up, we have Takara Tomy. Takara Tomy only produces products in or around Japan, and they're also going to be about a year ahead of Hasbro. Hasbro is the company that handles Beyblade X distribution in almost every other part of the world. So if you're in North America, for example, and you go to your local Target or GameStop, Hasbro is going to be what you find. The reason I bring up the differences in the Beyblade brands is because they both have slight differences in what products they have available. For example, Takara Tomy has three different launcher types. There is the Winder Launcher, String Launcher, and the crappy little Proto Launcher. But they have these launchers in several different color options. They also have accessories like grips and the battle pass. Meanwhile, if you look at Hasbro's side, they also have the same three launcher types with winder, string, and crappy proto, but they don't have any grips, they don't have the battle pass, and they have way less colors, at least for right now. Really, the differences in brands isn't going to affect which launcher you should use, but if you do go only Hasbro, you're going to be a lot more limited on what launcher setup you can make. The new Vice Tiger Beyblade is coming out in like a week. And if you haven't gotten it yet, definitely pre-order it from sponsor of the channel, Mall of Toys. They have Vice up for pre-order right now. And if you don't want that bay, they have other releases like Shinobi Shadow, Duran Buster, Duran Sword, etc. So go and check out Mall of Toys. Links in the description down below. And make sure to use code Illinook to get 5% off. So now that we've talked about the differences in the Beyblade brands, let's go ahead and talk about the launchers themselves. And the first one I want to talk about, just to get it out of the way, is the tiny, crappy proto launchers. If you have a bigger Hasbro collection, you probably have a ton of these little launchers lying around because every single Hasbro starter comes with these tiny little launchers. That is different from Takara Tomy, where almost all of their starters come with the better winder launcher. Kind of sucks that Hasbro is giving you a worse launcher, but there are reasons for this. Mainly is the price. If you look at the Japanese yen cost of a Takara Tomy starter and translate that over to USD, it is going to cost more than a Hasbro starter. But the Proto Launcher is going to be the worst for power, the worst for control. It's also kind of hard to grip if you have normal sized hands, so maybe the Beyblade will scrape your fingers. And if you have a Takara Tomy grip, you can't connect this to that. So overall, I just wouldn't, I would just throw it away. Okay, not actually throw it away, but definitely use a different launcher if you can. So now let's move on to the actually good launchers. And the first one I wanna talk about is the Winder Launcher. Once again, this is not included with any of the starters for Hasbro Beyblade. You have to buy this separately for the current cost of $7.99 USD. Depending on what country you're in, that cost is going to change but it's decently affordable, at least here in the US. And these launchers are great. If you don't have a grip, it's still pretty easy to hold in your hand because the launcher is pretty big. It's also really powerful as well. That's something that I definitely noticed whenever I got Beyblade X for the first time, like back in 2023, is how good and powerful these launchers are. And they're so strong that if you were to launch your bay as hard as you possibly could, it may even be too much power and you kind of have to scale it back. To showcase the power that you can get from the winder launcher and later on in the video compare it to the power of the string launcher, I did a semi-scientific test. I connected the launchers to my Beyblade X Battle Pass, which among other functions is able to track and log your launch power. This isn't going to be perfectly scientifically accurate, 
But what I'm going to do is showcase my peak power among 10 or 11 launches and then tell you what my average launch power was. So for the Winder launcher, I did a total of 10 launches and my peak power was 10,190 and my average amongst the 10 launches was 9,345.9. Now, before I move on, I know some of you guys in the comments are going to be like, yo, your launch power is, is, is sucks. It's terrible and you're weak. You're not wrong. I honestly have no idea how it's possible, but I have seen people use either the string or the winder launcher and get powers of 15, 17,000. I've even seen one for over 24,000. I have no idea how they're getting those numbers. I don't know if they're using performance enhancing bays or if they're literally the real life Jaka. I have no idea, but I can't get anywhere close to that. So if I'm just weak, I'll accept that. But yeah, a peak power of just over 10,000 and an average at around 9,300. Before I talk about the pros and cons of the winder launcher, let's go ahead and move on to the string launcher. The string launcher is a staple in Beyblade X history. Pretty much every generation of Beyblade has had a string launcher of some kind. The plastic gen, I think this had like a little Baygoma launcher, but it kind of counts. Currently for Hasbro, you only have one color to choose from. You have the one red and black launcher that comes with Soar Phoenix, which is fantastic. But when you look at Takara Tomy, they have a basic black one, a white one, a blue one, and a red one. And there's probably more colors on the way that we just haven't seen yet. But besides the difference in aesthetics, the launchers from Hasbro and Takara Tomy are the exact same. Just like the Winder launcher, I connected my string launcher to my battle pass and I did, I think, 11 launches to see what my peak power would be and what my average would be. And from all of my launches, my peak power was 9,677. Now is your time to laugh. If you think that's weak, you can laugh right now. Just get it out. I don't care. Actually, I do care. Kind of hurts my feelings a little bit, but whatever. But my peak was 9,677. And I will say some of the string launchers actually have slightly shorter or longer cords. And that is going to affect your power just a little bit. I don't really know what the length of my cord is. Wait, I'm just gonna stop right there, okay? But there are differences in string launchers sometimes. But my launch power average out of 11 launches was 8,841.55. So not horrible. I mean, it's not a ton lower than my peak power, I guess. But if you compare the numbers from the winder launcher and the string launcher, the winder is going to be a little bit more powerful. Now I will say this is definitely subjective, okay? I just may be stronger with the ripcord launcher than I am with the string. Some people might find their string launcher to be way more powerful than the ripcord launchers. But from my tests, string is just a little bit weaker. So now let's go ahead and move on to the pros and cons of the string launcher versus the winder. Starting with the winder, one of the pros is at least for Takara Tomy, they're definitely a little bit more accessible. This isn't really a point that matters for Hasbro, but even for Hasbro, it's going to be a little bit cheaper to get the winder launcher. It's going to be $7.99 USD instead of the $19.99 for Soar Phoenix, so it's a little bit more accessible. Another pro for the winder launcher from my tests is that it's going to be a bit more powerful. Having that extra power means your bay might hit a little bit harder or last a little bit longer when it comes to stamina, but there are trade-offs. Moving on to the cons of the winder launcher, the main one is of control. While you do have the ability to launch super, super hard, from what I've seen, the ripcord adds a little bit more tension. So whenever you launch the bay, I at least definitely move my grip hand around just a little bit. Not really the biggest deal, but if you're trying to launch a very specific way or trying to get your Beyblade to land in a specific part of the stadium, having that control loss is going to be a bit of a negative. There's also the fact that you don't necessarily want to launch super, super hard every single time. 
Uh, fellow Beyblade YouTuber Nizuma Blader actually made videos going over the Ripcord and the String Launcher, and he even said in his video that launching as hard as possible isn't really the greatest strategy. But pulling as hard as possible, one, increases the tension on the hand that is holding the launcher, so you're more likely to shift your launch, and two, the harder you launch, the more likely you are to self KO. And now let's move on to the pros and cons of the string launcher, which I think is the direct opposite of the winder launcher. For Takar Tomi, these are pretty accessible. You can actually buy just string launchers by themselves and they're pretty cheap. Definitely cheaper than Hasbro, I think. The ripcord launchers are still a little bit more accessible. And another con would be your max power output, at least from my testing. But now moving on to the pros, when it comes to power output, yeah, it is weaker than the winder, but it's definitely a lot easier to control. You're not really moving your grip hand nearly as much because it's just easier to pull on the string than it is to pull on the winder. So whenever I'm using a string launcher, I have a lot more control. I feel like I'm able to put as much power as I want into it without doing too much or too little. And I'm also able to gauge where my Beyblade is going to go. Whenever I use a winder launcher, I just kind of rip it as hard as I can. Honestly, all of this talk might be a little bit too technical, and you may just think, I really don't care. I'm just going to use whatever launcher I think is coolest, and that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly valid to do that. Use whichever launcher you like best. Whenever Beyblade X first came out, I built my own really nice kind of launcher setup using some stickers provided by the great 2Bernie. I even made a video talking about it. It was great. I loved using the ripcord launcher, but then I just didn't feel like I was able to control my bays nearly as well. So for my current setup, I've replaced my winder launcher with a string launcher, all the same stickers for the most part. And now that is what I use. So if you want ultimate power and you just want to see the bay go vroom, use the winder launcher. But if you want versatility and more control, then use the string launcher. And use the proto launcher, never, unless it's, it's all you have or you're just crazy like that. But that is going to wrap up this video. If you liked it, hit the like button down below and hit subscribe to join the Nook Nation. And let me know if this video helped you decide which launcher you want to use or if I just kind of yapped for too long. Let me know what your launcher setup is like in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next one. Have fun and bay away.